running through the product rule today, and this is taken from our chapter two, section three. We're focused on day one here where we're gonna work on the product rule. So um, the theorem coming out of the book says the product of two differentiable functions is itself differentiable. So the product is differentiable. If I take two things were, that started out as differentiable, multiply them, I get a differentiable function, um, which means I should be able to find the derivative of them. And then it goes on to explain how to do this. And it says, moreover, the derivative of f times g is the first function times the derivative of the second function plus, here we see the plus sign, plus the second function, here's g of x, times the derivative of the first function, f prime of x. So what I'm seeing here, this is what they were referring to as my first function, and this is the second function. So you'll uh, you notice here the formula for find and product rule. And you also could switch the order. I could take this group and put it first if I wish and add it. And that's what I've basically done here is looking at f prime of x times g of x where we don't take the derivative plus the derivative of the second, um, the second function g of x times the first function f of x without a derivative there. Um, I will primarily, you'll see me using this format just because it's what I'm comfortable with and it leads very nicely into the quotient rule because the order will be quite similar for quotient. So we're going to do a practice or an example A here and um, we're given two functions. Now, we could certainly do this without the product rule. I could just FOIL this out and I'd have what, 12x squared minus 20x plus 6x cubed minus 10x squared. And if I simplified it, it might make my work a little bit easier. I have 2x squared plus, ooh, let's change the order, 6x cubed plus 2x squared minus 20x. And then I'm going to go into my derivative. y prime is equal to 18x squared plus 4x minus 20. That is easy to do without the product rule. But with the product rule, let's see if we can capture the same answer. I'm going to go y prime equals. According to our formula up here, it is the derivative of f of x. So my very first function, or yeah, first function here, this is going to be like my f, and this here I'm going to assign to my g, my first function and my second function there. We take the derivative of the first function. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down rather slowly, um, taking my time through the steps here. I'm gonna take its derivative and then I'll multiply it by the second function g. Add to that, let's just make this smaller here so we get some room. Slide that off to the side. All right, now According to the rule, I take the derivative of the second function and the derivative of 3x minus 5 will be pretty easy to take. And I multiply it by the first function, 4x plus 2x squared. So that's the general layout. Underneath here, you can see I've got f prime times g plus g prime times f. Executing our, our intent here, the derivative of this first function turns out to be 4 plus 4x multiplied by the g function, 3x minus 5, added with, now I need to take the derivative of the second function, which was g of x, the derivative there, oh nice, is just 3, and I multiply it by the second function, 4x plus 2x squared. Did I say second function? The first function, f. It, we've got the derivative actually solved here. We just need to simplify. So I'm going to FOIL this, FOIL this through. This will be a simplifying process here. 
and that's going to look like y prime equals 12x minus 20. My outers, my inners is going to be a plus 12x squared and a minus 20x. Let's send 3 through and we'll have 12x plus 6x squared. Now adding like terms, we will end up with, where are our squared terms there and there? We end up with 18x squared. Got those taken care of. And then I've got 12x, 12x, that makes 24x. Take off 20 and we're at positive 4x. And the minus 20 remains. There is our answer, the derivative using the product rule. When I compare it to what we had done without the product rule, we did get the same answer. That's nice. Next, let's calculate the product rule again. What I, what I want to do is sine x times the square root of x. Now, unfortunately, on this one, we have no option but to have a product rule in place because I cannot foil and get around the problem. Let's rewrite this problem first, getting rid of that radical, um, changing it over, not really getting rid of it, but rewriting it into the format of x to the 1 half power. Now, once again, I have two functions. I can think of this as my first function. And you know what? We can assign any letter we want to these functions. Maybe I'll go with V and W this time. So that I, when I find the derivative here, the derivative of V times W, which I can indicate like this, is equal to the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. There's my game plan. Now let's do this. So dy dx, look at the notation we're using here. dy dx, I'm just taking their notation and, and writing it into the derivative of y now, is equal to the derivative of sine. So I'll take the derivative of sine x and multiply it by the second function, which is our w function. No derivative there. Plus, now we want the derivative of the w function, which will be x to the 1 half, indicate its derivative with the prime symbol, and then times v, the first function v there, which is sine x. Now, everything is laid out for us. We just have to do the work. The derivative of sine x is cosine x, and then it gets multiplied by x to the 1 half. Added with derivative of x to the 1 half, well 1 half comes down and I get x to the 1 half minus 1. We'll do that in a moment. And then multiply just by sine x, no derivative. Notice there's no prime symbol there. I'm going to do a cleanup step here. So I get dy dx is equal to, I'm going to run this back into the radical format. So that's square root of x times the cosine of x added with 1 half. The 2 will go down below, or is in the denominator. And 1 half minus 1 will be x to the negative 1 half. That's going to send that radical to the bottom. And then sine x will be a numerator uh, like that. That is an OK answer. If you had to make it one fraction, which let's go ahead and do, I would want to multiply my first by square root x over square root x maybe 2x, I guess, to make the same denominator in both of them. That's going to give me 2 times x times the cosine of x over 2 square root x added with sine x over 2 square root x, which simplifies into 2x cosine x plus a sine x. You should be capable 
of doing that work as well. It wasn't that it was wrong up here. It's just we could make it into one fraction. Product rule again. Now, this is just a little bit different application, or we're given different stuff. I no longer am given f of x equals some polynomial or some other function there. Instead, we're just given bits and pieces of information. Um, what I'm noticing here, f of 1 equals 2. Well, that's basically telling us we have an ordered pair of 1, 2. Over here, I have the ordered pair 1, 5, right? Being able to read the information. Here, I'm given derivative information. The derivative at x equals 1 equals 3. And then the derivative of g evaluated at 1 gives me 7. So just so that you're aware of what you're given. We also have a relationship or a definition for what the h function is. h is equal to f of x times g of x. We want to find the derivative of h evaluated at 1. So we will evaluate the derivative The derivative of h at x equals 1 is what that's telling me. First, let's just find the derivative of h. So we're going to find h prime of x. That will look like h prime of x. Using our rules, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. And I left off my x's just because this is really for my own benefit and I can shorten it up a bit. Next, I want to evaluate this at 1. So now I'm going to take the derivative of f evaluated at 1 times g evaluated at 1 added with g derivative evaluated at 1, f evaluated at 1, multiplication in between those two. And everything that I've got written on this line can be referenced back to these givens and substituted into our spots. So final, final answer here, well, maybe not. We might be able to simplify. We'll see. f prime of 1, f prime of 1 is right here. It is 3 g of 1 is right there, a 7, added with g. Oh, gosh, guys, I'm sorry. Grabbed the wrong one. We wanted just g of 1, which is 5. Noticed my mistake when I came to this next one. I need g prime, and now that's the 7. And then back to f of 1. f of 1 is located right there. It is 2 giving us 15 plus 14 makes 29. And 29 is our answer. OK, on to D. Let's suppose that um, h of x is equal to f of x times g of x. That's kind of similar to last time, isn't it, on uh, example C. So find h prime of 2. Well, let's develop a game plan. h prime of x is equal to derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. I need to evaluate this time at 2. So this is now going to look like f prime of 2 times g of 2 added with g prime of 2 multiplied by f of 2. And this time we get all our information graphically. How convenient. So we just got to be able to read the, the graphs to get it. First thing I need is what is f prime of 2? Well, looking here, there's the f prime graph. If I go to 2, travel up, it intersects my graph at a height of 1, 2, 3, it looks like 4. So from this graph, I can interpret that f prime of 2 is 4. The slope is 4 there. So let's put in 4. Next thing I need is g of 2. Here is my g function. Looking at 2, travel up 
and over to get our height. The y value is a 2. So g of 2 off this graph gives me 2. So we'll replace g of 2 with 2. Add in g prime, g prime graph, locate x being 2, right there, right? Up, calculate the y value, which is a 1. So I have g prime of 2 equals 1. And f of 2, the last graph that we haven't used, this worked out nice. There's 2, x being 2 comes out with a height of 3. So I can tell from this graph that when I have, when I input 2 into my function, I get out 3. And there's 3. Now, um, h prime of 2 is equal to 8 plus 3 gives us 11. Make sense? You know, the AP likes to approach problems in various uh, perspectives. Algebraically, where they just hand you the two functions. Um, table format. This last one, they kind of listed out the information. Sometimes that will be presented in a table format as well. And then this one where they gave us the graphical information. So just trying to show you different ways to do problems to gain information, I guess. Now, we can have the product rule be of two functions, three functions multiplied together, four functions multiplied. Here you can see we have a function one times a function two times a third function. So I've got three functions being multiplied. It actually is a pretty easy rule. It, it, this idea that every, every function gets a turn of having its derivative taken. So here, notice we have f being uh, the derivative taken of f. In this middle grouping, g gets its derivative done. And in this last grouping, h got its derivative taken. Then, in each scenario, you can see that they're multiplied by the other two functions, here f and h, and here f and g. If I had four, um, functions multiplied, I do the same thing. F prime times G times H times I, perhaps, and so forth. So let's do this one. Do you see how this has three functions to it? If I separate them off with parentheses, it'll be more obvious. So this we could consider like our F, our G, and our H function. And then following the rules up above, we can apply the product rule. So y prime is going to equal f prime times g times h added with g prime times f times h. And finally, our last one, the third function, the derivative taken of it, and then multiplied by the first and the second function. So there's kind of the, the layout. y prime equals the derivative of the first function is 2x, and then I'll multiply it by the g function and my h function, which is sine x, cosine x. Addition. Now I want to get moved to the middle term. Let's take the derivative of the middle term. Derivative of sine becomes cosine. My f function was x squared. My h function, the last function, was cosine. Addition. Now I'm on to my third grouping, and I'm going to take the derivative of the third function then. So negative sine x is the derivative of cosine times f. f is h or x squared, and the middle function, oh, that stuff moved, didn't it, is g was cosine x. Is there much simplifying? Well, not on this first grouping. On the second grouping, we can put our cosines together. So I'd have x squared cosine squared of x. And, oops, coming in with a minus sign. Ooh, did I make a mistake? I feel like I did. I needed to take the derivative. I, I sure did. If we slide this stuff back over where it was, g was the sine, wasn't it? I bet you noticed I made a mistake. And I finally wised up to it. I get x squared times sine squared x. 
Now, can anything be placed together? Not really. I see they do have an X in common, so I suppose I could factor an X out, but beyond that, there is really nothing in common. So I could have X cosine squared X minus X sine squared X, and that is our answer. Rolling forward, um, the other two classes today are working on this assignment. If you have time and want to get started on it, feel, please feel free to do that this weekend. Um, Monday or our next lesson day, we will be working on quotient rule as well. So have a great day. Thank you, guys.